I originally got my GTI because I wanted a car that could kind of do it all. Hatchback, so tons of trunk space and I can haul whatever. I got the four door instead of the two door back when they still offered it in 2016 because I wanted it to be comfortable enough so I can drive whomever. And also something that could be fun when it's just me driving along the curvy back roads or something, doing the occasional pole or even tracking it. And the GTI has accomplished all of that and more. I've taken it as far up as Vermont, up to Niagara Falls, right next to the Canadian border, or even down south to Maryland for H2OI back when, you know, it was still a thing. Good roads, bad roads, and sometimes even off-road, and I've just been so happy that it's been able to take everything I've thrown at it problem-free most of the time. But just like all good things, it must come to an end. So after eight years and almost 70,000 miles, I live in New York City, I don't drive that much. It was finally time to sell the GTI. I sold it to Corvara and they gave me like 10.6. and replaced it with something almost similar, you know, four doors, practical, and Kind of like a do-it-all car. Maybe a Mark 8 GTI or a Mark 8 R, but I don't want to pay the cost of a new car, 30, 40,000, for 75% of the same car as a Mark 7 GTI. Here's the Hyundai Elantra N. You represent me now. What you think, I'm gonna let you roll in a Hyundai? Maybe Honda Civic Si? Just imagine this is a Si, I couldn't actually source one. But looking them up, they're turbocharged, but they still only make 200 horsepower. I feel like that's a little too practical and too safe for a Civic Type R, but those are expensive. At least here in the East Coast, all the ones that I've seen, they're like super marked up and like way over 50,000. My first go-to choice was the Gia Corolla. I knew I wanted something JDM and it being a hatch, 300 horsepower, all wheel drive. It kind of just checked all the boxes for me and also me assuming that it's a Toyota, it would be reliable. But even after almost two years of it being released, there were still so many markups on it. And it's not like it's a rare car or like a limited production run or anything. Sure, the Morizo edition is, but all the other ones, the base and the, the core and the circuit or something, those are just regular production cars. So after markups and taxes, it would come out to like way over like 50,000. And at that point, I feel like I would just get a Supra, not a Corolla in a sense, but it's kind of outdated interior. It's still a cool car though. And also the insurance estimate that I got for it was the highest one out of all the other cars that I asked about. It was like 2,200 for six months. And that's that's pretty insane, again, for a Corolla. If you're looking to get a new car, you should probably call your insurance company and give them the VIN and, and the make and model and stuff like that to get an estimate before you jump into a car and then you're like, oh shit, like this insurance is actually super high. And the funny thing was when I was on the phone with the insurance agent about the Giro Corolla, he was like, what's the make and model of the car? I was like, it's gonna be a Toyota Giro Corolla. And I think he put in like a regular Corolla and he was like oh it's only going to be about a thousand for six months with full coverage and I'm like wow that's great but then I was like wait I feel like that's off let me give you the actual VIN I gave him that he typed it in he's like oh it's actually going to be 2,200 for six months so moving down that list with a similar criteria anything but front wheel drive turbocharged and faster than the GTI from the factory we come to something like this 278 horsepower turbocharged from the factory all-wheel drive four doors and so much aftermarket support funny thing is I was actually supposed to get a WRX before my GTI but it's because I only wanted it in a manual and I didn't know how to drive a manual so I went to the dealership asked for a test drive and couldn't make it out the parking lot and then a week later I just got the GTI with a DSG did I also mention that I have to get a manual this time so that I can finally learn to drive manual and be forced to live with it. It seems like the WRX is the clear winner. I mean, it's sporty, it's practical, 278 horsepower, way more than the GTI from the factory. And this would be the go-to trim to get. This is the premium trim. It's like the best bang for your buck for around like 35,000. You get the heated seats and the upgraded infotainment system with like the big 11 inch screen. And they actually make so many of these that I see a bunch of them in dealerships. They're just sitting on the lots for like months and months and there's like so many incentives for them. For the premium trim, it's around 35,000, depending on whatever else accessories you add on. But I'm pretty sure you can like get that close to even like 30,000. It's practical, it's sporty, and it's also kind of a sleeper to most people. They might just be like, this is just a regular sedan. It's an Impreza. And it seems like, yeah, the WRX is like the most logical, practical, makes sense choice car to upgrade to from the GTI. But I never said I was a logical person. And that's why I got a 2024 BRZ instead. 228 horsepower, naturally aspirated, rear wheel drive, manual six speed, and can only fit two people, which is perfect for me. Funny thing is I've actually had this for a while, since like May, I think, but I haven't posted anything about it because I've been learning to drive the six speed manual. I know, I know, kind of embarrassing, but I'm getting there. Did I also mention that it's in blue? 
So this is the new whip. I'm so excited to be making content for it. I'm still within that breaking period. I'm only at like 600-ish miles, but once it hits that thousand, getting that oil change and I'm full sending it. And hopefully by then I'll be like really good with driving at six speed. I got some stuff done to it. PPF, dash cam installed, wheel locks, and I got some other parts coming in. Thanks for watching, especially if you made it this far now. Catch you on the next one.